terms of what, you know, what Precious' role is going to be moving forward. Mm -hmm. You look at a player like Gary as well. But, you know, I think when you're you're getting a player of this caliber, um, you know, in in Jakob, and you talked about just having to address this area of need at the center position, you know, I think think you slot him right into the starting lineup. Yeah. Um, If you now have him in the starting lineup Mm -hmm. and you know that Pascal and Scotty are going to be core fixtures, how is that front court looking for you? Because to me right now, none of them are, are, are solid shooters at all. Yeah, I think that's the other. That's why I want to see what else they're going to do because they address this need. But you look at the team, like there's still a huge glaring need for shooting. There's a huge glaring need for depth, especially if you're looking to win for, for this season and then going into next season as well. Like, what are you really adding to this group? Like, I think, you know, they didn't have to trade a lot of talent on the roster going out, like shouts to Kem. Um, but like, you know, they, they still need to bolster their depth Mm -hmm. and, you know, I want to see what the starting lineup looks like at at 3 PM, depending on what they do. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of the fit with Jakob in particular, I think Mm -hmm. that, you know, we have seen now the Raptors play in the last three seasons without, uh, just a serviceable seven footer. Um, I think this definitely, um, you know, ends that portion of it. And I think that, um, for people who maybe weren't watching as closely to the Raptors in 2017 or 2018 when Jakob Proto was here. Um, maybe they look at the situation. It's like, okay, do we have a seven foot kind of like, you know, stiffer kind of player? Mm. Um, I think for me, you know, watching uh, a lot of tape on Jakob Proto this morning while everyone else is refreshing their timeline for mm. Kevin Durant stuff, you know, uh, for us, we have to look at some Jakob Proto tape and, and watching the tape, you know, I, I think that, it's pretty clear and it's a good reminder of sort of uh, what we saw when he was in here in Toronto was it's a very mobile big man. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely uh, very good as a defender. Now, last season, I think he had an elite impact defensively. This season, he's having a good impact defensively. I think he's somewhere in between. Okay. Right. I think he's a pretty good defender, right? He's not the best shot blocker in the league. He is not an average defender either at center. I think there are certain things that you can rely on from Yaka Prado in the sense that He's a really good shot blocker. Um, he's a really good shot contester as well. Even just his mobility in terms of how he moves, he's able to flip his hips really quickly. And so when he has guys driving downhill at him, he's very good at staying in front and keeping a contest forward. Um, this is generally speaking what you normally see from the tape. However, it has to be said, though, one of the tape, uh, one of the parts of that tape, I suppose, is what the game happened last night oh, right. where the Raptors literally played against Yaka Proto. What a funny situation that was. And, yeah, obviously we didn't see any of that last night because the Raptors were able to either hit jumpers over him in the case of Pascal Siakam or in the case of other guys drive past him. We saw Scotty take him to the cup twice mm. and score. We saw Fred take him to the cup and score mm. a couple of times as well. So, I don't know, maybe thinking back to the reaction podcast from last night, maybe I might have to change my third star from uh, Scotty Barnes to Yaka <laughs> Um, But in any case, like, I think defensively, this is definitely an upgrade for you at center. I think mm-hmm. it offers you some other options in terms of how to play defense now. Because the Raptors have been doing so much to compensate for the fact that they don't have shot blocking in the paint and no size in the paint, mm-hmm. that they always send multiple bodies. Maybe we see uh, less help, um, especially in the paint, which means less corner threes being left open. Um, because now you have somebody who can actually be back there and, and contest a shot and rebound and stuff like that. Um, and I think the other aspect, too, is that's one way they can go. The other way they can go defensively is now that they have a shot blocker at the back, can you play more aggressively on the perimeter and play for even more steals, right? That's mm-hmm. that's really a, a roster decision or a strategy decision that's going to come down to the head coach. But I think it's pretty clear that the Raptors have liked Jakob Proto. I think Nick Nurse even said pregame yesterday, you know, without the tampering, but he was just like, look, we we really enjoyed having him here mm-hmm. while he was in Toronto. The Raptors liked Jakob Proto so much, they took him on the ninth pick way back in 2016. That was actually, you know, ahead of somebody like, you know, Sabonis, for example, was available on the board at that time. Um, they took him over uh, that. They used the ninth pick with that. And then, all, you know, they even took him over Pascal Siakam, who obviously turned out to be the, the best player the Raptors drafted that year. Uh, he went 27th. But, yeah, they liked Jacoproto for a while. And, you know, I think that they needed to – well, they felt the need that they wanted to, uh, to, to fill the gap at center. And I think that they've at least done that. But at the same time, though, do we agree with that direction? Like, did you think the Raptors should have done this? Because I think for us, we've